I cannot find my security blanket and by my security blanket I do mean my glasses. I am supposed to wear them because things get a bit hazy but I have no idea where I left them. They are just somewhere among the plants. Most likely on my grow tent because that's where I tend to put stuff temporarily and then I forget I did. Hopefully in the next segment of the video because this video will contain segments, Nero is going to have some glasses on so this doesn't have to be so confronting feels like being nude honestly tells you how much i know about being nude we're doing something different today and that's also why we have the different background don't worry this is not permanent we're just gonna deal with a whole variety of plants that are not only hoyas i don't know i did not have to change the angle for that did i we have some things that i really don't want to do Maybe that's how I should call this video. I don't want to do this because I really don't want to be doing these things that I'm going to do today and tomorrow. Ideally, this was supposed to be a week of me doing things I don't want to do, but I didn't want to do them. So I have two days. <laughs> But hey, that's something, right? The first thing on the list of things I don't want to do is just take care of my Monstera Escalato. Oh gosh. What I need to do with my Monstera Escalato is put a pot around the stem of the plant and find a way to anchor that pot into the wooden pole thing that I'm, it's not a wooden pole, it's a, just a plank of wood that I attached to the pot. The reason why I need to do this is because I have been postponing this for such a long time that my plant essentially outgrew the wooden plank, so things are great, and I really will need to cut the plant soon. We are not ready, no one is ready. So I'm just hoping for magic here, essentially, that I will put the pot and the roots are gonna start to grow there really, really, really fast and I'm gonna be able to chop the plant in half. I do think we have some roots ready because I wrapped it in moss. I don't wanna do this, have I told you? Number two, I need to pot my Hoya cuttings in bags. I have many bags. Listen, I have quite a few Ziploc bags where I have kind of been putting Hoya cuttings. Those are the plants that have fell out of the pots because they did not have an established root system. Some of them have passed away and they're still in the bag. I also have Hoya Archibaldiana, so I'm just gonna put all of that here into pot Hoya cuttings. So face the bags, face, the propagation box and face the rotsta. I have a lot of the propagations of my Hoya latifolia and rots that they need to be potted. And there is a propagation box there. Oh, okay, I know what that is about. That is the plants that I got a couple of weeks ago from Romania. They're Hopefully they're doing okay. I'm not gonna look into that today. Should I just add something that I really wanna do? Kind of make it nicer, easier? No, oh, you're right, I shouldn't. I'm gonna face all of it. <sighs> My philodendron gigas, oh. Okay, I have to face it, I have to face it. I think I broke it in half. I need to cut it and propagate it. It's fine, I love this. I have to face my philodendron plaumani. Oh, that one has long roots. Absolutely need to face my philodendron plaumani citrus. You know what? I have cuttings of Hoya carry splash on my desk. They've been sitting there for a week. I actually recorded a video by accident, not realizing they are there. If you just see in the back of my video, Hoya carry splash cut, you know, just, it's been there for a week. Surprisingly, the leaves are still firm, so I'm just gonna write Hoya Carey Splash. You know what? Cut Hoya Imbricata. Face the root mealy Hoyas. This is just terrible. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to any of these. This is what I'm facing. This is what I'm dealing with. I hope you also have a terrible time <laughs> dealing with whatever. <laughs> I don't wanna be the only one to suffer. Pick the most terrible tasks that you have and let's face them together, please. The first thing, what am I gonna do first? I don't wanna do anything first. Oh, let's do the Monstera. See you soon in the next shot. I shan't be enjoying any of this. And again, hope you're not enjoying your tasks either. We will just have to push through this and suffer together. And maybe then it will be fun because it's always fun when, when we suffer together then not. I feel this is like a ballet stance or like a squat thing. It's not comfortable. That is the Monstera and 
I'm just gonna basically drag it so it is up against the tent. I'm not entirely sure how I'm doing this. I guess I just push. You really cannot even stand by yourself. Interesting. Wow, you're really tall, really, really tall. I feel that's an angle that you can appreciate. I can't see anything. <laughs> I realize this is a vertical video. That definitely occurred to me. I just need to show you how tall she is. Remember, I am meter 96-ish and she, she's big. This plan is not gonna work. It's not gonna work. We're having doubts. I'm just gonna move you horizontally. So remember, this is what she looks like. We're not gonna cut her yet. Don't worry about it. Boy, she tall. <laughs> this happened in like, since January, I think. It happened really fast. It happened really fast. You will also need to accept that you probably may not see my head really well. I know no one is like heartbroken about it. We're just gonna see how many roots we have here. I'm kind of afraid this didn't work. And also I have no idea how exactly am I attaching the pot. This isn't looking good. This root isn't fresh and it didn't go far. So I'm just really hoping to find some fresh roots here. Okay, so this totally failed. We did get some roots starting here, but that's not enough. That's not gonna sustain anyone here. You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a pot somehow. Somehow I'm gonna put a pot with cocoa peat and perlite. I think maybe in two spots, maybe one here, where I still have some aerial roots that did not activate. And then I'm gonna put one here where I do have aerial root that did activate. Poop, 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 poop. If I could attach a water bottle somehow here, I would do that. Maybe I can attach a cup of water. So let's try to essentially be insane and attach a pot here or a cup, another here, and then somehow water here. Okie dokie. I don't see how we could fail. I'm gonna grab some stuff that I will need to make this concoction happen. And until I come back, you can listen to me talk about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of members meant to help you explore your creativity and curiosity. Skillshare has a lot of online classes in photography, film, video editing, but it also has many classes that will help you start and build your own business, build your own portfolio, help with creative confidence, help with time management, refining your brand, really anything that you can think of. A personal goal I set out for myself this year is to do more vlogs, which I do believe everyone has noticed. And the reason for that is I watch a lot of creators on YouTube and I find that I really connect with those people that are more free and more relaxed, which is something that I am not, but also with people that do more vlogs. And the reason why I think their content resonates a bit more with me is because there is no barrier between the creator and the audience, which is something that I find can really happen when you do a lot of talking head videos. So I decided to change all of that and to do more vlogs. That is why I took a class on Skillshare vlogging for business, Build Your Brand with Video by Aaron Winters, and it is something that really helped me with the vlogging game, quote unquote, and it helped me understand vlogging a bit more because to be honest, vlogging can be a bit uncomfortable. And this class also helped me understand that it is not really about the aesthetic angles, but it is about the story, about the narrative. And it helped me kind of understand how I can create that narrative and how I can vlog with intention. That is not to say that I'm super comfortable with vlogging yet, but this class helps me understand why this is something that is very important for me for my channel and for you as well. And at the end of the day, we will get to be closer. I don't think that means that you can zoom in this much, Miro. It's just, it's a different type of closeness. I also started another class by Ali Abdal, Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow. And I believe this class will help me with time management, which is something that a lot of us need help with, and motivation as well. Now, I think that these goals may seem very small to you, but in reality, I find that it is a lot of small things like these that prevent us from doing or achieving something bigger. And in order to really achieve that big thing that you have set up, 
to achieve, you really need to start to chip away at small things like these. And because Skillshare is the sponsor of this video, first 1,000 of you that use the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And now we can go back to vlogging Miro. <laughs> what a joy. Unfortunately, as you have seen, my plant did not really root into the moss, and I suppose the reason for this is because I did not wrap the moss really well. It was not particularly moist. It was a bit moist, but we did not overdo it. And you know, you cannot root anything in a dry potting mix or a dry medium. So I decided to just try my luck with cups. This is similar to one of those balls that you can buy that helps you root the plant. We will see if this will work. I don't think it will. I really don't have much faith in this, but you know, maybe it will. But in any case, I don't have much time. This monstera will have to be cut pretty soon. I cannot extend the board anymore. There is just no physical space. My room does have a ceiling, so that is the limit. And if this doesn't work, I will turn the top into three cuttings and then again, put them against the board. And then it will probably be a bigger problem in the future because instead of one, plant, I will have three fast-growing monsteras in the pot. I also would like to point out that I did not do a very good job with this, so if you think it looks ugly and janky, it, it, well, it's because it does. It does look like that, and I'm going to be the first one to admit it. If it works, it works, and that is the only thing that will matter. I also put a cup with a bit of water there, and I closed it in a Ziploc bag. Again, essentially, this is Miro's version of aeroponics in a sense that it is nothing like aeroponics, but we will see if that will activate some of the roots. And of course, I will keep you updated, and if we do develop enough roots, and by we, I do mean the plant, then you will have the honor to see in the future video how I cut it. Attach the microphone. Can we just accept this is like the new look? You're way too low. Welcome to another day of the plant chores I don't want to do. It is very humid today. It is raining outside. Thank you very much. I kind of dealt with my Monstera Escaleto. It wasn't pretty. It doesn't look good yet. I do have faith in my work. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do have faith. Anyways, we can cross up the Monstera Escalato from our list of the things that we did. It's a very ambitious list, Miro. <laughs> so what we have left for today, we have to pot the Hoya cuttings, face the prop box. I wrote one prop box, but I think there are like three that I would like to face. So I'm just gonna add the ES there. Face the Ratsta. What am I facing in the Ratsta? There's nothing to face in the Ratsta. Oh, the variegated Latifa. Oh no. It's gonna be fun, I feel. The gigas, oh, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, you know what? This is gonna be great. This is gonna be amazing. We're gonna do such a great job. Also, do we think I could do this in a couple of hours? <laughs> it is 12.33 right now. I bet you that I can get all of this done by five. I would like to have all of this done by five. I don't think it's gonna happen by five. You know what? Let's just be optimistic. I think we can do this. Do you believe in me? I believe in you. I got Hoya Puber recently and I still have not found a proper spot for her. I also have two of these. Where did I put the other one? Oh, okay. I see it. I see it. We have some Hoya Latifolias in my Rodsta. So, do you see if I do the... Something's up with these cabinets and I don't think they're level enough and they keep closing or I have ghosts. One of those. It's probably ghosts. I mean, that makes the most sense. We have my Hoya Latifolia. I have chopped this plant into as many parts as possible because I cannot keep it anymore. It was too big. They are rooted in water. It's been such a long time since they rooted in water. Not all of the parts look good, by the way. Some of them will look yellow because it was neglected for a very long time. And then I decided to neglect it a bit more. I cut it up and shoved it into a box with 
nothing, just air. I sprayed the box inside and it started to root in there actually. This is something that I discovered. I don't know if I have ever told you this, but sometimes you can put Hoyas in a Ziploc bag, just spray the bag and you can put the Hoya in there with no perlite, no moss, nothing, just the Hoya and air and it roots really fast. I'm just calling it my version of aeroponics. <laughs> I will keep one of these for myself. I don't know which one. So anyways, I will have a lot of Hoya Latifolias to sell. That means Miro can get some new Hoyas for himself because that's what I need, more Hoyas. We are going to start with, which looks the less challenging. I have Coco Peat for about two pots, three pots. So that's very useful. So I did not think that this would happen. Some of these will stay back with me until they grow out a bit more. I'm going to kind of now make a selection of which of these are also sale ready or which will be sale ready in a couple of weeks when the roots grow out more and which need to be held back. How am I gonna do this? What was the plan, Miro? Maybe I will keep this one for myself. I don't know which one I will keep for myself because I don't wanna pot that one in a small pot. But this is another one. This one is also not going to be stable. I need to put a bamboo sco skewer. S skew? You know what? Bamboo thing. Maybe I'm keeping this one. Some of the roots are very small, but they're gonna grow really fast in cocoa peat. And I think I'm gonna put these in the bottom of my tent. And this is the one with the largest leaf. That is how big Latifolia leaf can get. The leaf is very old, so it doesn't look very good. I'm not gonna keep that one. It's gonna take a while also to grow out some of these, and they all are healthy, but cosmetically there is some damage. Oh, this is a nice cutting too. Maybe I want that one for myself. I like this one too. Shut up, Miro. Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna keep this one too. I think three in a pot. I can do three Hoyas in a pot, right? You're not gonna judge me. Is that all? No more Latifolias? 17 Latifolias, oh my gosh. Well, I certainly don't have enough potting mix for all of those. Honestly, all of these are probably gonna am amount to one Hoya, <laughs> buying one Hoya cutting. As you grow Hoyas, the longer you grow, the more expensive they get. Here is voiceover Miro once again. I'm just not gonna give you a bit of peace for a nice montage. I continued with my planned chores and I decided not to record all of them or at least not to talk during all of them. So I potted the rest of the Latifolia cuttings. I honestly have no idea how many I have. I do believe it is close to 20, but not quite. And yes, I do think I need to reconsider the number that I said that I'm gonna keep. I think it is not necessary to keep more than one. I also did end up cutting my Hoya Imbricata this plant has not been enjoying life because I have neglected it. And honestly, at this point, I don't even know if it can be saved, but I decided to give it a go and I put it in a small Ziploc bag. The previous setup did not work on the wooden plank. I then tried a moss pole that also didn't really work because it wasn't keeping the moss moist. It did have a moment where it kind of grew okay in the tent, but I really just dislike this plant. I really decided that I don't like any of the shinglers. None of them are very practical and in my opinion the beauty if we can call it that of Hoya Imbricata is to have it shingling. I also finally decided to cut my Philodendron Gigas. This has been on my mind for such a long time. It was in my grow tent and it grew really well and then it ran out of the moss pole and then I broke it and I kind of left it like that for over a month and I just decided that I need to get rid of the plant even though I like it. I just don't have the space and I don't have the time to take care of so many plants. At this point I have over 300 Hoyas most likely and and I don't even know how many aeroids and it really needs to be downsized at this point because, well, I do intend to get more Hoyas. So unfortunately, I do think I will be getting rid of all of the cuttings of Philodendron Gigas. I also had some Philodendron propagations in one of the prop boxes and I decided to move them to my Rodsta cabinet just so they can grow out a bit more before I decide to sell them. Hello and welcome to the last day of this brief three-day vlog. We have to repot philodendron that I promised I will repot. I got an Esplomani variety citrus and it is this plant right here on the desk. It's growing a new leaf and it has needed a repot for some time now. As one can see, 
that is going to be dealt with today. I expect we will need to break the pot for this and it is going to go into this pot that leaks. How to set up yourself for a failure right from the start should be the name of this segment. This plant is not going to stay with me. It is going to go to a friend. It needs a longer pot. It doesn't make sense for me to repot it in a circular pot because it is a plant that likes to... What is the word when you do it on the ground? Crawl. Also, just ignore what I said before that. <laughs> there is a potential challenge, and that challenge reflects in me not having enough pawn, I think. That is the amount of pawn we're working with. If that is not enough pawn, I do have here another container filled with pond that needs to be boiled, but listen. If I need to boil the pond to repot this plant, I am going to cry. I'm gonna break down into tears because it's just not that kind of a video <laughs> where I have strength for that. We are not there mentally where I can just cook pond. If I was very confident in this plant's root system inside the pot, and I'm not, I would not break the pot, I would cut off this portion of the root. However, I can see there is a lot of rotten roots in there and that's because of repotting. Essentially what has been the experience for me is that when you repot plants in pond, if you disturb the roots, sometimes they'll be okay, but a lot of times they are not gonna love it. I mean, should I try to get it out? Maybe if I untangle the roots. This actually may work. All right. We got the problematic root out, guys. I actually got to save the pot. Do you think the pod got terrified when I came here with the pliers? Because I think so. You can see that we have some rotten roots there. That could be the transition before, or it could be my very consistent watering, but I'm just gonna try to clean that off. Ugh. It's just a lot of nasty stuff. If you experience this in pawn as well, do let me know. I don't think it happens with all the plants, but I have definitely seen that it happens more than I would like it to happen. But I guess this shows you also the resiliency of these plants because to have this much of nasty roots and for the plant to be really healthy, it's kind of shocking to me. I have some conflicting feelings about pawn. Then again, I have the same feelings for all potting mixes, like all of them have the good side and the bad side. Maybe it's just the nature of growing plants that we have to deal with these issues, that nothing is ever ideal. There's not a potting mix out there. Even the organic ones can have issues. So I don't know. We're doomed to suffer. <laughs> this is very positive, isn't it? Oh gosh. That's why you come here for the positivity. Imagine if I had a motivational channel. I assume it wouldn't do really well. Most of this root that was outside of the pot is good. There is some rot there, which I assume is a dry rot. But of course, before this passes on to my friend, I will make absolutely sure that the plant is healthy. I will, however, say my biggest aeroids are in coco peat and perlite. Actually, this is one of the last ones that I had in pond. All I'm saying is if it will grow an organic mix without issues, maybe that's the way to go. Now, all of this is healthy root. Majority is healthy root. There are a couple of roots that could be cleaned off, but I also find that the more you mess around with the roots, the more issues you will have. I do have roots all over my legs. Thank you very much for that. All of these are the dead roots mixed with pawn. So is it ideal? Absolutely not. I just adjusted the camera angle a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I don't know how I want this to be oriented. I do want to make sure that this plant is all the way in the corner. I think this is a good position and I'm glad that it fits. All right, I hope you can see a little bit better. I want you to be able to see me potting it. I'm just going to rotate this, so... <gasps> oh shoot, I did mess up the leaf a bit. Sorry. All right, I'm gonna go and shower this plant and change my battery because my battery is empty. I think we are at the end of the journey called a very wild video Miro made where he did a lot of the things that he didn't want to do. That is a bit too long for the title of the video. So I think we will have to come up with something else. Let's just grab my notepad and proudly, 
cross out one more thing and that is Palmani citrus. So what is left to do on this list? Taste the bags. I have a couple of bags in my grow tent that I didn't face. They're kind of like propagation bags and Mame. So Mame is actually here and I was supposed to face that too, but I just don't know what to do with it. I think the reason why I don't know what to do with it is because I kind of like it now. I mean, I always liked philodendron mommy, but it can be a bit problematic because of the mites. It just has grown out really nicely. It's very beautiful. I think I can even show it to you without much consequence. It does have some leaves that are not looking great, but most of them are fine. Of course, we have this happening too. So I think it needs to get a crawler spot as well. I actually think the best course of things would be to repot it into a pod that is meant for crawlers, let the stem root into that pot and then cut it. That way I get to keep the top, which I really like, and I can propagate the rest of the base into smaller plants. It is essentially me creating more tasks for myself, but I am happy with what I did. Honestly, from the beginning, I was like, this is kind of an unrealistic plan. So I'm glad that I got to do all of it. And there's only a couple of small tasks now that I need to do that I don't really want to do. And then we can dedicate all of our time to tasks that we want to do. I do believe that is all for today and for this video. I do need to kind of stop talking right now because I'm very tired. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I did go to bed yesterday at 2 a.m. because it was just a lot of cleanup. I just need to not hear my voice for a moment. <laughs> Which is not gonna happen because I have to edit the video. I think a piece of myself just left me right now with that realization. As always, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and see you around very soon in the next video and goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Youth of the Walmut and Marcel Har, and as always, a massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anna Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Becky Higgins, Beth Gibson, Betsy Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropicals, Heather Oppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Housebone Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Cara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cook, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Laplan de Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Nayli Yang, Neha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schlieff Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Plan Dread, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sibyl Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Dude, Tia B, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Youth of the Wallamoots, Zordorama, and Zlok of Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brianna Phillips, Kilon, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy, Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantelenia, Ringlov, and Tang, Watanas, Ria Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari, Constance, Amelia Bronson, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren, M, Lori Ann Subramanian, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chinmuller. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, but not enjoyed doing the tasks because I also did not have a great time with that. As always, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon in the next video.